This episode is brought to you by Atlas VPN. Hey everybody, Bill here, Lloyd there. Welcome back to On Deck episode 29 or something. Lloyd, how are you doing today, man? Uh, I'm doing okay. I'm I'm exhausted, man. It's been a it's been a full week of um, spending time outside with the family and and doing stuff. Well, not a full week, a, a mostly full week of spending time outside. It's going up to like 40 degrees outside Celsius, which is like 108 Fahrenheit <laughs> or something. It's it's ridiculous over here. It's like cold and then warm and then hot and then humid and then not and. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm happy to be spending some time inside today, though. Let's let's just put it that inside way. with the air conditioning. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, b- before we get started with the show, uh, big thank you to our channel members. Uh, you guys are awesome. We really do appreciate that. And as a thank you to everybody who is, you know, here first, uh, there's, we're going to be giving away two codes today. Um, one of them was donated by Heisenthal Community Discord member. And that is for Horizon Zero Dawn. That's going to be sometime throughout the show. It's going to be down in the uh, the lower third. So watch for that. And then um, the ROM3, also community member, uh, sent in a copy of Drawful 2. So watch the show uh, all the way through for those. And then lastly, before we actually get started On the show, I want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's show. This episode is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Thanks to the internet, gamers get to talk to people from all over the world. And we've all been there before where we're having a conversation about our favorite TV shows or whatever on Discord. And then it turns out that it's not available in your country. That's where Atlas VPN is super handy. So what does a VPN actually do? Well, it makes all of your internet traffic travel through an encrypted tunnel so that no one, not even your ISP, knows that you're watching Rick and Morty on Netflix. Atlas VPN was developed by IT engineers back in 2019, and since then it's been used by over 6 million customers. Get the best VPN deal in the market. Stop the ads, stop the malware, while keeping blazing fast internet speeds. And with no device limit, you can actually save money when shopping online thanks to being able to use regional pricing. You'll also get the data breach monitoring tool. This scans known breaches for your information. That way you know which passwords are okay and which ones you need to change. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. You'll get three years at $1.83 per month plus three months free. If you try it out and decide you don't need it, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Remember to get your subscription for only $1.83 per month. Follow that link in the description down below before the deal runs out. Remember, when you support our sponsors, you're supporting the show. And a big thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this episode. All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today on on deck, we wanted to start things off with a discussion topic. And the both Lloyd and I have been f- flirting with the beta. Like we 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 keep. I, I don't I don't know about you, Lloyd, but I keep installing the beta, and then uninstalling the beta and and 90 percent of the time when i uninstall the beta it's because i've run into some kind of issue with monster hunter rise and i don't know if that's the beta's fault or monster hunter's rise's fault and we'll talk (laughs) about monster hunter rise a little bit more uh later on but lloyd why do you uh what issues were you running into with the beta and by the way before we get started on that everybody it's beta you're supposed to run into issues that's that's why we do it but what are your thoughts what what's going on with yours i i ran into a really interesting error um i i wasn't smart enough to download this image to my computer uh before putting it up but i did capture a screenshot of what it looked like and i'll see if i can bring this up Uh, if you can see over here uh at the top left where the volume slider is it says uh it says echo cancel sync Okay. Echo dash cancel dash sync. Um, I could not uh, adjust the volume on my Steam Deck. Doesn't matter what I did. If I hit up or down, the little slider would go, but no additional volume would be created uh, by that. Um, so I fixed that by restarting, uh, and it hasn't happened again. Um, but I've had issues where I'm, I'm, I've, I've been so far unsuccessful in having a really good experience playing um, docked. So plugged into my television or whatever. Um, so I'm like, okay, I got to get this working because I want to do some capture. I want to do do things. So I've been working to get this uh, workflow sorted out so that everything looks, performs, everything works well. 
Uh, I found that over the last uh, few days, Bill, um, since I'm on the beta software, uh, my video won't show up randomly while I'm docked. I'll get audio only, no video, or I'll get video only, no audio, or uh, the the aspect ratio will be completely blown out. Um, so I'm not seeing the full screen and I'm using a video capture card that automatically, like when I'm capturing an OBS, it automatically resizes to full screen. So it's not my OBS issue. It's just a bunch of really, really weird bugs over the last little bit with the latest beta. Uh, so like you, Bill, uh, I am also flirting with, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the beta. I think I'm going to break up for a small period with the beta and go back to my, uh, to, to my original love, which is the uh, stable release software. And you and I have the, we have the same, uh, capture card, right? What, which capture card do you have? I have the, um, what is it? Uh, 4k 60 Mark two from Elgato. Is yeah. What I'm using, I have the but same I've tried one. My, I've tried my, uh, cause I have an external HD 60 S plus and it's the same thing. So it, it's, it, I don't believe it's the capture card. It's either the, the dongle that I'm using to, to go from USB-C to HDMI. I have one of these ones and I have like two other ones, which are um, in a drawer that I, I just put away. They all have the exact same issue. So I don't know if this is a me issue, if this is my hardware issue, if it's a Steam Deck issue. Uh, but I think I'm going to get rid of all possibilities uh, of it being beta software and just get rid of the beta <laughs> and boot, boot right into uh, the release software again. Yeah, I still don't think that Valve's... Um and I could become a hundred percent wrong about this. Uh, this is, I have no inside information here. My guess is one of the main reasons that we're not seeing the official dock released yet is because the software for docking is not 100% there yet. Um, sure. It's just, there's too many issues where when you like, when I take my Nintendo switch and I dock it, I don't have to think about it. When I, take the steam deck and I dock it, I do have to think about it and it is just a PC. So that is understandable. But at the same time, it would be really nice if I didn't have to do any, if I didn't have to think about anything when I plug it in. That yeah. being said, uh, we've talked about this on the show multiple times, so I don't want to go into it too, too far, but um, the, the, the official dock, I, I think that they don't want to ship that until it feels like it's done. And it and it's not a hardware thing. I think it's a software thing. Um, I run into issues where when I take it off the dock and then I go to, like, turn it on, it will, uh, what's the word? Like, the screen will, like, I'll hear the boo ba doo doo or whatever the sound is. <laughs> I'll hear this. Right, you know, oh, that, I booba to do, yeah, I got it. Uh, I'll hear got that it. sound, but the screen doesn't you, turn on, and so then I have to push the button again, and then push the button again, and then the screen turns on, which is very frustrating. What were you gonna say? You, you played that sound effect three times in a row. Is really weird, but, <laughs> but for two of them, your mouth moved. It was the oddest thing. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, I, I, I agree. I agree. It's, it is not uh, the experience that. I guess people that are general consumers, not like hardcore PC enthusiasts that are used to breaking things apart and, and going into the command line and, and running, running Linux commands to change things like you, you want a consumer level support supported, um, uh, functionality. Um, it needs to be easier. So hopefully that's like you said, we're waiting for the official doc for this, uh, experience to be just, it just works. Um, we've seen part of that being changed already with the UI scale. Mm -hmm. So they know that most people hook it up to a capture card and they're going to get, or, or a television, or TV, they're going to yeah. get, or they're going to get 4k, uh, or 1080p depending on your TV. And they're like, okay, well, let's just make the UI scale instead of forcing an output at 720p or 800p, which I would love. Hopefully that is still coming. Um, but they're they're slowly working towards that um, that that direction. So hopefully with the coming betas, uh, which I probably won't be using, um, but I probably will because I, <laughs> I it's super quick to switch. It, it is. That's the great thing about it. Uh, hopefully they'll continue to, um, I don't know, work, work away at making it a, a user friendly experience for people that aren't like hardcore PC gamers. Yeah. Um, and, and for those of you who for those of you who've never switched over to the beta, it's so easy to try it out. Uh, yep. All you do is you, um, you, I 
should have had my Steam Deck hooked up for this. But all you do is you go into your system settings and you go down to um, update and then you just say, oh, I want the beta software or the what's it called? Preview or preview. Uh, You know, you pick the one that you want. And then it's just like, okay, apply the patch and restart. And then you're you're done. And then when you're like, oh, no, this isn't working the way I want, you can easily switch back. I see that you just added into the show notes a Proton GE update. And yeah. my phone thinks I'm talking to it, so stop it, phone. <laughs> yeah, just a little update. We talked last week about um, there was that um, uh, OS, Steam OS uh, app that you installed. Uh, it was like QT Proton whatever. Um, it yeah. was a way to install a various versions of Proton. And I said, you know what? I've used a bunch of tools to try to get different Proton versions installed on my Steam Deck, and it's never worked outside of desktop mode. Um, it's actually never worked outside of the Heroic Launcher to be able to choose those versions. So I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing here. Updated to the latest version of that uh, QT Proton. Um, I'm blanking on the name of it. So my Proton apologies. Up QT, I think is what it's That's called. That's the one. That's the one. Um, so I, I uh, upgraded to the latest version. Um, said install, chose Proton GE from the list, the most recent one. It installed and it just disappeared. Like the the words in my screen disappeared. And I'm like, okay, I guess it's installed. So I rebooted back to game mode. And sure enough, when I went into compatibility settings in one whatever game I chose, Proton GE is now right at the top of the list. So um, it, what it must have been is uh, when I first got my Steam Deck was very early on. I installed all the... Um, uh, what is it? Um, the the Steam Deck ROM manager and all of the MU Deck stuff. Oh, um, I want to talk inst- about that in a second. So don't don't and, let's not forget. Sure, and it installed a bunch of things in the background. Um, the the latest, um, uh, I, I guess, MU Deck installer is a lot better. Um, the previous one, if you wanted to upgrade, you would just run the installer again, and it would go and update all your packages. Um, they've changed it a lot. So you can just run an updater now and it will update all of your components. But I guess through installing stuff manually, installing stuff through the command line, installing stuff through the Discover Store, dis- installing stuff through EmuDeck, um, I, I screwed myself um, on on getting these Proton versions working. So I uninstalled everything, uh, did that, um, the, the, the QT Proton thing, uh, installed uh, the glorious uh, eggplant version of Proton, and now it's working. And it's I'm, I'm able to. Time. It's glorious I, I, egg roll. <laughs> I know, but it sounds better when you say glorious eggplant for many reasons, for many reasons. <laughs> uh, but uh, but now it's just working. So, yeah, I, I, I guess if first you don't succeed, uninstall and reinstall uh, is kind of the, uh, the the solution here because, yeah, it's working working perfectly. So thanks for that tip last week because – as I said, I had that app installed. It just never worked for whatever reason. It just needed an update, I guess. Yeah, and for those of you who are watching the video show, you're like, why was Bill just messing with that? I was trying to get my Steam Deck to come up on on screen so I could uh, show like the desktop mode and uh, the like the glorious egg roll thing. And for some reason, I can't get it to connect, and I'm not going to mess with it in the middle of the show. Uh, anyway, so let's take a second to talk about... Um, Emu Deck. So when I first got my Steam Deck, I ended up installing directly from the Steam Store RetroArch and or RetroArch. Don't don't at me about how to say it. I don't care. <laughs> um, uh, I installed that, and then I went through the task of figuring out how to get my <laughs> my ROMs that I have onto the Steam Deck because S- Steam Deck is. Um, or the steam os is linux and windows is windows and like the the two file systems aren't necessarily compatible i can't even remember how i did it but i ended up getting them getting the files on there and then transferring them over and everything worked fine and then i saw a tweet this weekend and somebody was showing off the ui for emulation station i have emulation station running right over there on my arcade cabinet but i don't know if that even showed up on screen did it uh, the the side panel of your oh. <laughs> uh of your centipede cabinet showed up yeah <laughs> <laughs> well anyway it doesn't matter you guys know what an arcade cabinet looks like i i've got emulation station running on that and mm-hmm. i was like well i really do like that ui better than the retroarch ui i think it looks it, it's just more visually appealing and if it just so I was like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And so I went to MU deck 
com, I think it is. And I follow the steps and I got it all working and it was, it, it was really easy to get going. And then I transferred my ROMs into the new ROM folder that they want you to put your ROMs in. Yep. But then I like loaded up a game and the buttons weren't set up the way that I thought that they would be. And it was, and I was like, I, I haven't messed with it anymore since then. Uh, just, I was busy, so I didn't have a chance yet. So that's going to be one of my goals for this week is to mess with that a little bit more. Right. But like the buttons weren't how I expected them. And okay. you know, that could be just a personal preference thing, but it was weird. And I also was like, okay, well, if I want to do this, like, I, I had trouble like canceling out of the game. I was like, how do I cancel out of the game? I can't figure it out. I had to qu quit the thing every time, or I had to, I don't know what the c controller combination is. I was pushing all it's of the buttons at once and then it closed. Select and, was, and start, select and start gets you right out of the, whatever is running and takes you back to the menu. So it's the, uh, the, the two little tiny buttons. The, oh, uh, okay. The, the, the hamburger and the, uh, and the two window buttons, you hit those at the same time and then it gets you right out of whatever emulator back to the, um, the front end that's running. Gotcha. And, and I also wanted to figure out how to like do save states and stuff like that. And, I, I've, yeah. I I was just having trouble finding that, so I, I'm going to be working on that this week to figure figure out more about that. What, you use Emudeck or do you use RetroArch? I use Emudeck, um, which installed everything. Um, I believe some of the emulators boot into RetroArch. Uh, most of them will boot into Emulation Station. Actually, what I'll just do is load up Emulation Station because I created an icon for it with nice little art artwork, and then I choose whatever game I want to play there. Um, if you go to emudeck.com, it tells you all the hotkeys right on the main page. So oh, it's, it's okay. select an L1 loads a save, select an R1 uh, um, sa um, saves a state. Uh, there's select an A to pause emulation, select an R2 does fast forward. So there's a lot of stuff that is built in. And the really cool thing about emudeck is because all of these emulators have their own configuration. So you can go into, you could, you could run say uh, an NES emulator by itself and then go in and change all the stuff that you want. The nice thing about Emudeck when it does the install is it, it puts the same controls, um, the profile, I guess, for the controls into every single emulator that is there. So all of your, all your emulators will work the exact same way. So, um, so the same button combinations, oh, the same okay. everything will will kind of work for the most part. There's some things that don't work in some of the emulators. Like there, I think the um, the DS 3DS emulator doesn't like. I think it installs Citra, which I don't think works with some of these controls that are built in, and you have to manually do things. I haven't tried that personally myself. I I stay to the kind of like NES, Super NES. Um, that that's kind of the the stuff that I want to emulate. All that stuff works perfectly uh, with Emudeck. And the best part now is if you already have Emudeck installed, Bill, go back to emudeck.com if you haven't done it recently and run the installer again, and it will actually update all of your stuff. So if you already have RetroArch installed that you did manually, it'll take those profiles that Emudeck created and drop them into the RetroArch that's already installed. Um, and it mm. makes everything just work really, really nice. Um, the the updater for Emudeck works really well now. Um, definitely worth checking out. Even if you've already done it once, it it runs a lot better than it did when I got my Steam Deck a couple months ago. So here's my next question, and maybe you can answer this for me. I uh, when I was stupid because I have a big I I got the one with the five twelve whatever, and I was like, oh, I'll just install it to the um to the internal hard drive, and then I was like. Right. That was stupid. Why did I do that? These games don't require any kind of speed. I should have just installed it to my SD card, especially yeah. because then I was like, and then I can scrape the the database so that I can get all of the the cool artwork and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah, and that's that's built into <clears throat> Emulation Station as well, um, which is really nice. You can do all your scraping right from inside Emulation Station, right? That, right. I would because I had to do it for my arcade cabinet, and so I was about to do that, and I was like, "Oh, that's going to take up a bunch of room on my internal hard drive." So I should have <laughs> installed it on my SD card. Here's my question: mm. If I run it again, and they did say on the website you just run it again, but if I run it yep. again, can I? And then I choose external. Is it just going, will it move the stuff that I've already put over? 
I'm not sure. Sh- it won't move it. I'm I'm fairly certain that it won't move it. Um, I, I'd have to look at the FAQs. Uh, it doesn't show anything here, if there's any way. What I would probably do is just uninstall everything and then reinstall it on your SD card. Um, I haven't run the installer to uninstall, so I'm not even sure if that's an option, but I would assume it would be uh, because they have the update script um, also gets installed to your desktop in the... Uh, in the uh, desktop mode. So yeah, I would try like maybe uninstalling everything and then just reinstalling everything to your SD card. Okay. All right. I'll, I will probably do. try that. I just don't want to have to go through the, the pain of trying to figure out how to get ROMs from a windows machine onto the Linux machine. Cause I remember when I first got the steam deck, that was like my biggest, uh, <laughs> the biggest thing that I had to overcome. And I wish that I, that I had like, documented it as I did it. Cause then I would have made a video about it because I just can't remember how I did it. And like, I tried 48 different things and then finally I figured out the thing that works. Uh, yeah. and this oh. is because I don't know anything about Linux. Uh, anyway, you, you, you added, uh, a, yeah. a yeah. thing well, to the well, show notes. <laughs> before we do that, I want to say the easiest way that I transfer ROMs is I drop them. I have a USB key that has a USB C on one side and a USB a on one side. So I plug the USB a into my PC drop my ROMs into the folder, unplug it, plug it into the Steam Deck using USB-C, go into desktop mode, and then I open up the folder for my USB drive, and then I open up the folder for where the ROMs are going on my SD card, and then I just drag and drop. And it's super, super fast to do. But aren't the, like, doesn't, doesn't it not recognize it because of the file? What file system are you using? Um, Just NTFS, the, the standard Windows file system. Linux can read that, no problem. I can't remember what the issue was that I ran into then. Uh, anyway, uh, go ahead. And, and I was going to say kind of a last thing. Uh, you said don't at me when you were talking about emulation. And yeah. I got I, I to gotta say don't at me, uh, Robocop fans, because <laughs> I, I, I upset every single uh, person. And what's like Ed 209 is going to come after me and be waiting outside <laughs> my door or whatever. Uh, apparently I upset people. And I didn't mean that the Robocop movie was bad. The Robocop franchise that came out in, in the 80s was bad. The first movie was fantastic, but everything else related to it was just not good, which really sucked. Um, so it's <laughs> it's really good to see uh, uh, a Robocop game coming out because I, I hope it's going to be as good as I remember from when I was a kid, not when I look back at it from an, an old man's eyes. It's too late, Lloyd. It, it, <laughs> they, they have already, it, it's just like in the movie when that guy puts down the gun and a 209 is just like, please lower your weapon. Yeah, that's that's what's happening. Like I, I looked at the comments and I'm like, oh my God, I, I upset the entire internet and I, I apologize. Uh, well, you know what? It's okay. Uh, let's move on to what's on deck. Uh, Lloyd, uh, well, I'm going to let you start off. What have you been playing on deck this week? Um, so I, I took a few days off because work has just been so insane. And the first day of vacation, I locked myself in a room and I played Final Fantasy VII Remake and I completed it. I beat the game finally. Uh, it, actually, it wasn't that long after we did the last episode. I was already at kind of the point of no return, although there are. I think three points of no return in in the remake where it keeps saying, oh, if you do this, you can't come back. <laughs> and I'm like, you already told me that. So, yeah, it, fine. Let's go. Let's keep doing it. Uh, beat the game. Finished it. Such a fantastic game. I haven't played the DLC that came with the intergrade or intergrade grade uh, version of it. Um, but I, I'm going to put that on the on the shelf for a little bit. It, I just loved my experience with Final Fantasy seven. But that wasn't enough Final Fantasy for me. So I dropped uh, into the Final Fantasy IV Pixel Remake, and uh, I'm about halfway through uh, FF4 on my Steam Deck using the, the Pixel Remake, um, which is so good, or P- Pixel Remaster, I guess is what it's called. It, it is so good, and I- I've played Final Fantasy IV or Final Fantasy II if you own the Super Nintendo cartridge, right. it's called Final Fantasy II in North America. I've played this game dozens of times, um, mostly to completion, maybe not um, all the time, but I've played the the starting of this game so often and and play. I know where places to level up really good are. You level up outside all the Chocobo areas. And it's all these things that I used to do back on the Super Nintendo when I was a young kid. It, it's like muscle memory. It is always amazing to me when I play a game that I haven't played in a while. And I know where all the secrets are. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, you just go over here. You go walk through this wall and you go around and you can open up these chests. 
and it's all just muscle memory that's popped back into my brain, which is, uh, which is so good. Um, so yeah, I'm about, I guess 12, 15 hours into this one. It's about a 20 some odd hour main campaign. Uh, if you're not, um, like power leveling, which I was doing, um, before, before every time someone new would join my party, I get them up to level 20, uh, and spend some time just, just power leveling them up. Um, yeah, it's it's been so much fun. I, I'm glad I picked these up when they were on the Steam sale. Uh, I have three other ones that I got to play through, so uh, I think there's going to be a lot of Final Fantasy over the the the, the next little while as I'm just uh, bathing myself in Final Fantasy goodness. Awesome. Uh, I have been playing. Boy, I I want to talk about this in a little bit. Um, looking for good games to play when you're doing something else. Like I have Final okay. Fantasy twelve installed that's good yeah except i can only do that for grinding like i can't Hmm. like uh, as soon as they start talking i'm like all right i gotta stop whatever i'm doing and pay attention because i want to know what's going on with the story uh it's great for grinding not so much for the story thing uh this final fantasy uh four seems like one of those games that would be good for that because there's no talking it's just you know i mean yeah there's text to read but there's no talking um I found a game that I really enjoy playing while I um while I'm doing while I'm listening to a podcast or watching a TV show and that's Rocket League um and uh, I it's it's terrible cuz I went to search for it so that I could bring up the Steam page for it and this, there is no Steam page for it even though I'm playing it on the Steam version because I I got this as part of like it came with my steam controller when i bought my steam controller it came with rocket league (laughs) absolutely no way i would have bought rocket league if not for the steam controller because i don't like racing games that aren't mario kart although that's that's been changing as i played forza uh forza this year and i don't like sports games that are not mario sports games essentially so this is two strikes against this game (laughs) <laughs> and I got it for free and I loaded it up and I was like, oh my God, this game is so fun and addictive. And I played it uh, a, a bunch. And then when it came to the Nintendo Switch, I ended up buying it for the Nintendo Switch. And But I still have the Steam version, even though Epic Games bought Rock, bought Psyonix and they took it off of Steam, you can still play it if you had already owned it. So I'm able to play it on Steam without having to do like the Hero Oak launcher or anything. And the game just runs perfectly 60 frames per second uh everything on high uh and it's it's just it's so fun to get back into that game it's one of those games where as soon as you start playing again you're like oh yeah i remember this this is awesome uh when when was the last time you played rocket league lloyd um when it launched on nintendo switch i think i picked up a copy for my son because he was obsessed with it and i played a couple games and i was like this is fun I don't want to do loot boxes and I never touched again. And I know oh. that's been, that's been ripped out of the game because yeah. Epic bought them and took out all the, the, the randomized loot boxes. And now there's a store where you can buy the stuff you want. Um, but yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't popped back into rocket league. Although that to me, that sounds like it would be a fantastic game to play on deck. It is. It, and it, it works perfectly. And uh, like everything's just, it's a really good game. And I feel like, uh, it boy, I wish it were. I I wish everybody would have the exact same experience as me, just being able to go into the Steam library and download it again. Um, it's unfortunate that it's not on Steam anymore. So if you don't already own it, you have to do the the workaround with the Heroic Launcher or whatever. Uh, we both played some Monster Hunter Rise this week. In fact, I'm going to try and remember to put a link in the description down below. We live streamed it and. Um, First off, before we talk about that live stream, I want to say that I was playing uh, docked. I finally had figured out how to make it so that the game would work when it's docked. And a big thank you to, I can't remember who told me about this, but essentially what you do is you dock your your, uh, Steam Deck, you go into uh, Monster Hunter, and then you bring up the quick access menu uh, by holding down the Xbox button and A brings up your mm-hmm. quick access menu. By the way, uh, when you're when you're not holding your Steam Deck, and then you just make sure that your Xbox controller is player one, and then you're all set. And that's that's awesome. But then I went to play it undocked, and I ran up to a monster and I smacked it in the face with my sword, 
and game crashed. Oh my and, gosh. And so I was like, what the heck? So then I docked it. I did that workaround to make the Xbox Player One. I undocked it. And then I checked to see if the Steam Deck was Player One, and it was. And then it didn't crash. So I don't know what the hell is happening with this weird, game. It's weird. so weird. Um, all right, Lloyd, you and I played Monster Hunter Rise together. We did a mm. live stream. Link in the description down below, hopefully, if I remember. Uh, what were your thoughts on that game? Because now you I, finally have had a chance to play it. Yeah, so just to be really brief, um, people that maybe don't know my experience with Monster Hunter, I've talked about it on, on Nintendo Pulse uh, probably for the last 10 years. Uh, this is a game that I really wanted to love. I was a huge fan of the PlayStation Portable. Monster Hunter was huge on PlayStation Portable in Japan. Uh, imported, did all the stuff I had to do, got a copy of the game, expected to absolutely love this game, hated it, didn't understand it. I was like, why well, don't understand why I don't like this? Everybody likes it. Um, fast forward to every single version of Monster Hunter that came out. It's like, okay, this is going to be the one. This is going to be the <laughs> one that's going to convert me. And then I would play it for five minutes and not like it and then end up selling the game or whatever or trading it in or giving it to a buddy, uh, that a uh, friend of mine that's a big Monster Hunter friend or fan. Um, never liked it. Um, everybody said Monster Hunter, uh, the last one world, if you get the Iceborne or whatever the DLC is, it is finally the best place for a new person to start. And I was just like, okay, I'm not buying a game and a DLC to play Monster Hunter for the first time. But then Monster Hunter Rise came out and everyone said, oh, this is the best one. It's even better than the Iceborne stuff. Um, but the DLC is coming out and it's even better. So stupid me who said that he would never do it again. I bought Monster Hunter Rise. I bought the uh, Sunbreak DLC. Uh, so I have all the Monster Hunter stuff again in a version that I can't sell, Bill. I can't I can't take <laughs> right. You're stuck a, with a it. virtual. I can't take a disc out and and take it to a game shop and trade it in. Uh, I'm stuck with this one because it's in my Steam library. Thankfully, uh, long story short, I'm actually really, really enjoying Monster Hunter Rise. Uh, we did a two hour stream where Bill kind of um, I, I answered all the questions that I've had. It's like, well, why? Why is this? Well, it's because of this. So how why can't you do this? Well, because of this. It, it all was like super simple things like you weren't you weren't blowing anyone's mind, Bill. But it was all things that for some reason my brain just didn't grok when I played this game through like the, the eight different iterations that I've tried or whatever it was. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I've been playing, uh, we played two hours uh, together in stream. I played probably about four hours before that. I probably played another couple hours after um, fully on deck and I'm really, really enjoying this game. It's different than what I thought it would be. It is a game all about grinding. Like if mm -hmm. you enjoy grinding in video games, Monster Hunter. It's all grinding. You you want to make a new shield or a new sword or a new piece of equipment? Well, you need to go kill this monster like five times to get all the components that you need uh, and get lucky to get the components that you need to, to then go do that. So I've been doing that. Um, at the end of our stream, I was like, Bill, I don't understand uh, like weapon upgrades. Like, do I just wait and eventually... I'll be able to upgrade to the next tier of my bone sword or whatever it was. Well, literally right after I did a quest, um, I got to, I think, um, three stars for my um, my hub, uh, or, or I guess it was the village. Yeah, the, the village hub. quests. Got, the, yeah. So the, I, Just real quick, yeah. for anybody who hasn't played, you have two sets of progression. Village, which is solo play, and then the hub, which is when you play with other people. Go ahead. Yeah, so I did one of them. I got them up to three stars and did did the first quest, whatever. Nothing popped up on screen saying, congratulations, you can now unlock all this stuff. Um, so I went to the blacksmith. And next thing you know, there's like 80 different things I can make where I only had like five different lines that I could do before. So you had your, 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 your I don't know, defense sword and shield. Then you had your, your um, whatever different types. There was like five or six of them. Now there's like 15 or something or, or 10. I'm like, oh, okay. They never explain this in game. You level up your hub or your village and then everything just unlocks itself. I'm like, okay, little things that could pop up to make you kind of clue in to how the game is working for us new people would be fantastic. Uh, but in reality, all I had to do was just keep playing. So I, I think 
before asking questions or just stopping because I'm confused, Bill, I'm just going to keep playing. And eventually everything is going to be solved for me just by playing the game because apparently that's how Monster Hunter works. It is. And it, it's awesome. Like, you know, he unlocks this stuff and it, and it gives him all of this other stuff to make. But that's only for one weapon. Uh, so there's 14 different weapons in the game. And when you play the bow or the lance or the gun lance or the insect glaive or the dual blades or the hammer, they all play differently. And playing the, with the different weapons feels like a different game. Feels like mm. It feels like a different class in an MMO where, you know, you, you leveled through you got to end game. You're in a progression rating guild in World of Warcraft, and you are a rogue. And then you you make a priest, and it's a whole different ball game. And that's that's right. the thing about Monster Hunter that I just love so much. Um, yep. Yeah. So if you guys haven't played it, pick it up. Uh, you're Lloyd's running into zero issues getting it to run on deck. I'm mm -hmm. running into every issue, and I can't figure out what it is. To be fair, the game is listed as. Um, unknown like it's not listed as playable or verified or whatever but uh it, it's just frustrating because it's like my favorite game on the deck right now and uh -huh. like when i go to play it it's always like a crapshoot am i going to be able to hit this monster and continue playing or am i going to hit the monster and the game freezes uh, anyway um what else have you been playing well quick because we've been talking a lot about games we've yeah, been playing yeah, yeah. um um i been trying like hell to get a game, an old game that I loved called Dungeon Siege working on Steam Deck. Um, couldn't get it working. I uh, could, could barely get it running on my PC. And it does something weird with like video. Like it, it, it locks into, uh, I think it's like 1024 by 768 full screen or something. And, and that's the only video mode that it seems to support, or at least that I can get working um, even on my PC. So I'm like, OK, uh, maybe I'll just wait. Maybe there's a new version of Proton down the road that'll work. Um, but then I was I was browsing Fanatical, as I do, because I'm stupid about buying new games. <laughs> and I and I noticed that Dungeon Siege 3 was on sale for like three dollars. And I remember Dungeon Siege 3. Um, I had to go and check Wikipedia to see when it came out. It's a game from 2011. I originally played this on PlayStation 3, I believe. Maybe it was Xbox 360 was one of them. And it's uh, it's an action RPG, so it's like a, it's a Diablo like. Oh, okay. Um, but it but it's set in a in a different world, and I loved all three of the games. And there was a time in gaming where you had like Champions of Norath, and uh, and I remember and that. like just a bunch of different kind of like Diablo likes, which were more story focused than Diablo, which was just like hack and slash, pick up the loot. They had some story in it. Dungeon Siege Three is very much like that. It's very story mode driven. Um, I got it running on my deck. No problem. Um, some issues with the controls. So if you're going to do like I did and go pick this up on Fanatical for $3, if it's still on sale, it's a fantastic game, by the way, um, definitely worth the $3. Um, what you have to do is by default, um, Steam Deck doesn't know how to run this. So by default, it gives you a mouse and keyboard. Um, don't do that. Before you start the game, go into your settings and choose the uh, the joystick um, joystick with a joystick trackpad, I think it is. And then mm -hmm. you can go and turn that trackpad into a mouse if you want. Because um, this comes from the era of PC gaming where it would work if you had an Xbox 360 controller hooked up. Um, it would put up the right glyphs for it. But if you didn't start the game with that 360 controller oh. um, hooked up, you would, <clears throat> excuse me, you would never have any controller um, controller options in the game. So um, because it, it's playable with mouse and keyboard, but it's very awkward. Um, <laughs> since this came out on um, on consoles, you start the game up with a controller connected and it just works. Everything works. Um, all the controls on the deck work perfectly. The game is fully playable. I love it to death. I've I've played a couple hours of it, and it just is bringing back so many memories. I need to go find my because I I I'm pretty sure I have all the dungeon sieges on um, like original media, um, the ones nice. that came out on console and the PC. Like because I love this franchise back in the day. I I was addicted to Diablo like games. Um, so playing this on deck has been so so good. The only problem is I can't get it work docked. Um, similar to what you're having with Monster Hunter. It, it will only boot with the Steam Deck controls being player one or um, or even if they're player two, my controller just doesn't work if it's hooked up. So if I'm not docked, it works fine. 
if I'm docked, something screws up. So I, I need to spend a little bit more time looking into what is exactly happening here. But man, I was so happy uh, to get Dungeon Siege up and running on my deck because I, I love this franchise from back in the day. Man, oh man, I, I got to say, <laughs> you really brought back a memory for me of <laughs> starting a game and then realizing that you didn't have your Xbox controller plugged into the computer. <laughs> so then you had to right? shut the game off, plug it back in and turn it back on. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's too funny. Yeah. I was looking so, at the go ahead. Yeah, I just looked on Fanatical, and it looks like it is still on sale for $3. Um, the deal ends, uh, what is that, 11 days. So it looks like it's going to be on sale for, uh, for nice. a little bit, <clears throat> provided that they have enough uh, keys, because sometimes they'll run out of keys. So yeah, for less than 3 bucks, it's $3.22 in Canada. Um, so whatever that is in the U.S., two seventy five dollars or whatever, you can get a, a fun... Uh, uh, 20-hour uh, Diablo-like on your Steam Deck just no, this is meant to run on a PC square monitor. Um, oh, the, text nice. is very, the text is very small. Um, it's still fully readable, um, but it is kind of small. So you, your mileage may vary uh, because of that. But yeah, it runs really great. It doesn't run well if you put it into dock mode, uh, even without controls. Uh, it was dropping to like 10 frames a second. Uh, and, then, and then I realized I put a, t a TDP limit on it. So I turned oh, that off okay. and immediately it's back up to 60 frames a second. So yeah. Fantastic game, and for three dollars, it just seems like a such a great steal. So I was looking at the page, and the thing that the thing that drives me crazy is sometimes I will look at the Steam SteamPower.com, and I'll be looking at a game, and on the right hand side, you'll see if it's verified or not. You know, it is not right, it but is definitely not. Then it should ha like what? Why is it? I feel like they're inconsistent with wherever it is that they put that either verified unsupported like where they put that should be honestly that should be right up here for those of you listening to the show i apologize uh, up at the top right next to the title of the game they should have that yeah. symbol right there so i don't have to go scrolling around looking for it it drives <laughs> me crazy and i yeah. i'm looking i cannot find that symbol anywhere on here that shows that it's unsupported unknown playable or verified it's just a they weird drop thing. it they should drop it in right under recent reviews and all reviews where it'll be like positive or mixed right at the top of the screen um yes so right right under it, just put um deck deck status playable mm -hmm. unsupported or a game like this that hasn't been tested because uh apparently there, there's no steam input um profiles for this so you can't when you go to browse community created ones there's none. They just don't, they don't exist. So I don't think this game's been played on steam a lot. <laughs> well then just, just have underneath all the reviews steam uh, deck status uh, untested and, and yeah. then link to the thing, what untested means because yeah, it, it displays it if the games have been tested, but if the game hasn't been tested, it, it's still important information. And instead of having to scroll through to figure out where the heck it is, just, just put it right at the top. That would make a lot of sense. All right, let's move on to the news. Oh, oh, wait, you had Saturn Deluxe. Did you have anything new to say about that other or other than you, you've been playing it more? It got patched. Um, I don't think we talked about this one we last did. episode. Or, or we did? Okay, yeah. yeah. So the, the patch, I, I've played it a bunch of times. I've had zero crashes. So um, if you've been looking at this game, but were concerned that it was just going to keep crashing after every every level... Uh, I've played uh, I've played a lot of this game, and I haven't had one crash since the uh, most recent patch. Awesome. All right, let's move on to this is this is something that we talked about in the past. Um, mm. the the idea that proton and how well proton works could be bad for Linux gaming. And the reason that it could be bad for Linux gaming is because developers might sit, just say, you know what? I don't want to put in the extra work to get a, a, a Linux native version of my game when I could just use Proton. And that's a perfectly valid thing to say. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't want to say that this is evidence that this is going to happen more often because I, I don't, I don't want to say anything necessarily bad about the developers here of Arc, but they've been kind of known for low effort ports. Um, of that game. That being said, uh, Gaming on Linux uh, posted this uh, article uh, about Arc Survival Evolved is basically ditching their Linux native in order to use Proton. Um, 
they didn't announce the, the change on Steam. Uh, they put it on an official forum post. It says Steam Proton has been enabled by default on Arc Survival of Ar- Evolved for Steam Linux players, including complete battle eye support. If you're experiencing any issues with the Proton version of the game, please let us know in this thread. We'll work with Valve Steam to get these resolved as soon as possible. Uh, basically, the fact that devs can just ship the Windows version of the game and have Proton take care of everything for them, I, I can't imagine many devs continuing to work on getting Linux native stuff to work when they don't have to. Do you think that this is bad? Like, do you? What do you think about this, Lloyd? I don't know how to, how else to frame the question. I think it's great, um, to be quite honest. The the fact that um, through the engineers at Valve and everybody that's working on the Proton project, they they've been able to get it so most games just work without any sort of friction or heavy lifting is is amazing like this is this is the the vision for gaming that valve had it's like okay um developers can make linux native stuff and it'll run fine on steam os or whatever um whatever whatever version of linux you're running on your computer but we're still working with the proton people to make it so that the games that haven't been made for linux will run amazingly well um, so you're going to get like arc survival devs. I, I don't think they want to do any heavy lifting. Um, they, they released a version of this game that runs at like 320 by 200 on the Nintendo switch. And that <laughs> seemed fine by them, which um, yeah. still absolutely drives me crazy that that was a thing. Um, I remember the, the, the stadia version came out and, um, you had to run a bunch of console commands to actually get the game even playable. Um, they're, they're not, they're not known for, um, making their engine perform on low powered hardware. So if they can get more performance just by running the windows version, that's been uh, iterated on uh, hundreds of times over its life um, with proton, I think for a game like this, this is very, very good. Um, On the other hand, uh, a game like the Falconeer, you have uh, one guy, Thomas, that is making this game and he's like, yeah, uh, I just started a Linux native version. It's already there. It's ready for Steam Deck. I just ported the Windows version and here we go. Uh, he did the heavy lifting to get that stuff working on uh, on the Steam Deck, which is which is good. So you, you have the uh, the clued in and um, and agile development teams, one's uh, development teams that have the extra cycles or are able to pivot very fast work on a native Linux version and for everybody else, they'll, they'll deal with the windows version. And hopefully with the developers and valve and the proton people working together, they can figure out any little bug that might be apparent on the windows version running on Linux, um, through proton. Um, so that proton is available and, and better rather for all the games, uh, that are running on it. So I, I can, I can understand where people would be kind of, um, there'd be some trepidation there where it's like, Oh, I don't know about this. But from what I've seen so far, uh, everything just runs. Um, some games will run worse. Uh, there'll be more frames per second. I, I can't remember which game it was uh, where I chose a Proton version and it ended up downloading the Windows um, stuff for it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. It was running Linux native before and it still ran. Um, I need to go figure out which game it was. Um, I shouldn't talk about things unless I, ca- I have the name in my head, but my apologies there. Um it ran better as a Linux native version than the windows version, but the windows version was just easier all around to get everything working. Cause you just hit install and it installs. Yeah. I, I totally get what you're saying there. Um, I, I do worry that uh, worry is not the right word. I do think that, that the availability of proton and the, the, the ability for you to get windows games running with, out putting in a whole lot of effort at the end of the day we want to be able to play games and if that means we're going to get more games on the steam deck or if you're a linux guy uh, or gal uh, more games on your linux device then that's uh at the end of the day that's a good thing um whether or not they are linux native ports or proton stuff does that really matter and there's going to be people on both sides that say, yes, it does, and no, it doesn't. Uh, let, let us know what you guys think. I just think it's very, it's an interesting uh, discussion point uh, to think mm-hmm. about. It's just so, I mean, we talked about it months and months ago. So it's not like we didn't see this kind of thing coming. 
Yeah, are, exactly. Yeah. It, are, it, it, it's, <clears throat> it, it's disappointing to see, um, but also it's amazing that it just works. So it, it has, it has benefits and negatives on both sides. And I, I think over the, the coming year, we'll see this kind of idea play out a lot and it will be either developers are full on on making a Linux native port or most of them are just going to say this is working amazingly well. We're just going to release the Windows versions on Steam and not work on a Linux native. Um, this will play out over the next year and it'll be really interesting to see where most developers kind of uh, sit at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Linux, um, it's funny, like Valve they put out the Steam Deck and they said, oh, and by the way, it runs Steam OS and Steam OS, you can run it on other hardware if you want. And they, I don't know that they've released, like officially released stuff because it's they're still heavy into testing, but you can get it to run on other devices if you want. Um, GPD, which makes, <clears throat> excuse me, which is a, essentially a competitor to Valve in, in, the, in the hardware space, uh, they make some really weird looking devices, which are very, very cool. Um, like there's this laptop that has all the keyboard is way down at the bottom of the of the thing. And then it's got a trackpad up in the top middle and then little controller things on the side. I don't know how comfortable this thing would be to play with, but you know what? I'm interested. I think that that's really cool. Um Apparently, GPD has been talking to Valve, and Valve is saying, uh, essentially, Valve wants to optimize it. Now, they said uh, that it's going to be, and this is the, the owner of, of GPD, uh, somebody says, any plans to integrate with SteamOS? Um, and and uh, the owner said, earlier... Uh, as earlier of March this year, Valve contacted us about cooperation proposal, but for this cooperation, Valve needs to match the appropriate SteamOS systems for our 6800U handheld. We need to provide the device to Valve official. Now, Valve also has to improve the SteamOS system for the 6800 handheld. This process may take half a year. Uh, Valve has contacted us to consult if we're interested in the built-in SteamOS system. They can promote our products on the Steam official website. We will agree to this cooperation. We think that this cooperation will be the best. Obviously, there's like some translation issues there because uh, it's like not the best. But hey, you know what? Um, that's really awesome. And the more devices that are running SteamOS, the better that SteamOS is going to get and the 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 more widespread it's going to get as well. Uh, would you buy one of these devices uh, and then install SteamOS? It, would you buy it and then install it yourself, or would you buy it if it came? Which one would make it more likely for you? Would you buy it if it came with it? Um, yeah, that's that's a really tough one for me. Uh, I would love the device to ship with it, so I don't have to do anything out of the box. Like I'm. I'm all about the consumer, um, the consumer experience. And for someone that isn't a hardcore gamer, PC guy, Linux guy, um, just having it out of box would be better for everybody. Um, but if they have like on GPD's website, if there's a button you can hit, which takes you to the SteamOS download, um, yeah, installer, nice. you, you hook up your, your device to your PC or a Linux box. It, it does whatever it needs to do, puts the bootloader over, and then you you continue on your device and it and it does all of the installation. I mean, something like that would be would be really great as well. Um, I'm just really happy that uh, Valve is looking at other other bits of hardware. They're looking uh, at AMD. Um, they're they're looking at Intel processors. They're looking at like all of these other components, which are uh, like the computer industry is huge. There's lots of different yeah. stuff. There's AMD Intel for CPUs. There's uh, ARM. There's M1. There's like all these all, all these components that are all over. If you can get SteamOS running on all these things down the road, like if you could boot into like a virtual machine on your MacBook Pro and run SteamOS, well, now you don't have to worry about uh, about your games running on your Mac. You just boot into this thing and play your games that way. Of course, a better thing would be just to get Proton working on uh, on on um, M1 Max so that you could just boot Windows versions of games like they were oh. Mac versions of games. That would be amazing. Um, but but yeah, like something like Proton on, on the Mac would be great. But 
SteamOS supporting more hardware, more components, more uh, video cards, GPUs, all these things is going to be a bonus because this gives Valve options down the road. So Steam Steam Deck 1 has this, this hardware in it. Steam Deck 2 might be completely 100% different, but to the end user, it won't matter because everything is just going to run in the amazing SteamOS um, OS and it's going to look uh, look to the games like it's running on on a Windows box. The games won't care. The OS won't care. And Valve will potentially be able to take advantage of cheaper components, better um, better TDP, better whatever down the road with um, other hardware choices that they can make. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to a, a, a subreddit post from Shiny Blue Unicorn. Uh, they posted that uh, according to Proton uh, DB, the number of playable and verified games surpassed four thousand. This is uh, so March, April, May, June, July. So f- in five months, we now have four thousand playable games. Uh, according to Proton DB, it's today is sitting at four thousand and four as I load it up right now, and <laughs> it made me think. I wonder because. When we first, before we got our hands on the Steam Deck, a, a lot of us were going to uh, check my deck. Uh, yep. This little app that would you put in your Steam ID and it would tell you how much of your library is verified and, or not verified, but it would break it all out as playable plus is how they 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 put it. So right. I have that site bookmarked and I haven't looked in a while, and I clicked on it and before. I was the last time I clicked, I think I was sitting at around 28% or something like that. I clicked on it this morning. I am now at 47% of my library, my Steam library is playable plus. Uh, yeah. Of course, I know that there's a lot of these games that in this gray area of unknown, a lot of those are playable. They just haven't been tested yet. Yep. And the fact that like that number has gone up a lot. That number has doubled since I first loaded it up. And yes, I know that probably nothing has changed. I could probably play most of these games, but that's just awesome. I think that that's fantastic. Uh, Lloyd, do you know what your percentage is at? 53%. I just double checked. What? And He's got me yeah. beat. Uh, well, I've I've also like tripled my Steam library since uh, I first started <laughs> checking check my deck. So my numbers have changed a lot. But yeah, fifty three percent playable, um, one hundred sixty eight play- verified games, one hundred seventy four playable games, eighty one unsupported, and two twenty one unknown. Uh, a lot of those unsupported ones are VR titles, which will never be supported on yeah. deck. They will always show as red. Um, but yeah, like it used to be 24%, uh, when I first got my deck, I think it was at 24% and I'm like, all right, a quarter of my library is playable. This is awesome. Now it's over 50 and that's just going to keep ticking up as valve looks at what people are playing on their deck. Um, basically verifies them, gives them the check mark or the, uh, the, the yellow orange icon, whatever they are, whatever they're going to be doing. And they're just going to make their way down the road. Um, what I'd love to see is. Uh, you play an unsupported game and you get those little pop ups for a game that is playable and Valve's like, hey, this is marked as playable. Do you agree with this? Um, it would be nice if you were playing an unsupported game. If it popped up a little thing saying, I we we see that you played an unsupported game. How did it work? Did yes. you have to do any any of the uh, any of the below and then just have a bunch of like radio buttons you can choose hit submit and then it submits it to Valve so that they know that, OK, this game has been played on 500 decks. 400 of those people say that it is worthy of a of of a verified or playable check mark. It's at the list of the next game that we're going to look at. And it'd be a really good way for them to kind of filter through the games that are being played a lot on on the service. Granted, they're probably doing this already, but just with raw data, not with popping up surveys. Um, but something like that would be really nice just so you can give a little bit of feedback um, to Valve. All right, let's move on to upcoming games. Uh, this one I saw a, um, a video for. Well, I saw the name of it, and I was like, well, I hate spiders, so I'm <laughs> very curious about this. And then I saw that it was made by Way Forward, and I was like, oh, Lloyd loves Way Forward games. So I definitely yeah. wanted to show this this game off. It's called Spider Soars, and I was like, okay, am I going to be killing dinosaur spiders or am i going to be riding a dinosaur spider and i'm 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 not quite sure 
where Spider mm -hmm. comes into this because I clicked on it and I looked at the video and this looks like a Contra clone. And I love, 100%. I love Contra. Uh, so that, that's, that's like right up my alley, but this like you looks like you are running through and attacking dinosaurs with guns, and it's uh, the art style is a bit like um, Saturday morning cartoon, very, very much, very very Saturday morning cartoon. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, you are running through playing this Contra game. It looks like it's multiplayer. It it uh, it has a release date of July fourteenth, so it's it just came out. And I'm scrolling down to see if it is. I can't find out if it's verified or whatever. Uh, but I thought this game looks cool, and so I just wanted to show it off to people. Had you seen this before, Lloyd? Uh, it, it was part of um, something around E3. I saw just some screenshots or whatever, but I didn't actually watch the gameplay. Not until you put it in the show notes, and I went and checked out the the original gameplay video. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is this is a game I want to play. I love Way Forward by just by default their games are always awesome really uh well done kind of pixel styled uh games even though they're not really pixel styled they're using like cell cell anim animation to make it look like a like a cartoon um but yeah the fact that this is contra you even have like spread and, and other things you can shoot at uh 90 degree 45 degree mm -hmm. and like and zero degree um when you're when you're going around uh i, I want to play this game it just came out 20 bucks on on the store uh when i am not finishing every final fantasy that is available this is a <laughs> game that's going to be on my it's on my wish list at, actually so whenever i i need another game to play i'll just go pick this one up because it and, looks fantastic and sure enough it is it is spiders with dinosaur heads uh, so <laughs> it is yeah i mean and it has it supports remote play together as well so yeah pick it up and then you can play co-op with your buddies and you only have to buy one copy in order to do it that way which is Definitely. which is awesome all right uh last thing that we want to talk about before we get out of here is uh the, the the games that are on sale right now obviously there's a bunch of games on sale on steam all of the time uh there is a link in the description down below that will take you uh if you're on the youtube channel it, it'll take you to this list which is games that are verified or playable and on sale and i just wanted to remind everybody that stray is 10 percent off and that that sale ends when the game comes out so if you pre-order it you get it at 26.99 instead of 29.99 and as i scroll through this looking for uh really really good sales for games that are um that have like a thumbs up next to them. I see something like this: Borderlands Two, four ninety nine. That is a really really good deal. I haven't played Borderlands Two. I played Borderlands Three, and I really enjoyed that game. Um, Borderlands Two, I may end up picking up to play on deck, especially because it's only five, five bucks. bucks. Anything yeah, ridiculous? Anything in this list that's jumping out at you, Lloyd? Uh, not that I can see. I really wish I could just filter out all of the, um, adult titles. Yes, me I don't too. Know, I don't really, I don't like, if you play those fine, I, I don't care what people play on and their, they're uh, always on, their their on sale, <laughs> but I just, I don't want to see a thousand of them every single time that I'm scrolling through these lists. I, I wish I could just filter that. And there, there probably is a way like you can just do like minus, minus adult or minus hentai or something and we'll get rid of them. Um, but yeah, it makes it impossible to go through these lists really quickly. Um, there was another game that I quickly saw and then I, I hit back on my keyboard so I can't see. Oh yeah, this is a game uh, that I, I've, I've only played for five minutes. I'm, I'm doing a, a working on some captures right now. So I'll talk more about this one later. And it's called Turn Up Boy Commits Tax Evasion. It's on sale for 50% uh, off right now. And it is a, uh, it's kind of like a survival beat em up kind of game, Zelda like sort of. It's, it's really weird, uh, but it is pretty fantastic. And uh, uh, we'll talk more about that one in the future. But yeah, for 50% off, it seems like a, a big steal. Okay, and then I also saw uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is on sale. Uh, Resident Evil, where did it go? Um, yeah, I think there's a, there a big Resident Evil sale on, yeah. on Steam right now, so I think everything's on sale for some some discount. Absolutely, and this one is 60% uh, off, so you can pick that up for 16 bucks. That seems That's like a, a pretty good deal. Good deal. Uh, deal. 
Anyway, let us know what are your favorite deals that are on deck right now uh, in the comment section down below. If you are listening to this on a podcast player, then of course uh, you can uh, let us know on Twitter. I am at RunJumpStomp. He is at Dazme. Uh, Lloyd, anything that we want to talk about before we get out of here? I don't think so. Have a, have, a, have a great week, folks. Play a lot of games. Let us know in the comments below what you're playing, anything you want us to talk about next episode. But we'll uh, we'll talk to you next uh, next week here on, on deck. Have a good one, everybody. Bye, everyone. Stay awesome.